Hello everybody, I'm Steve and welcome to Green Side Up. Now, many of you are aware that I do lots of tests and I try to beat the system. I try to do things a little bit differently. I try to stretch the season out um, and make protection like this uh, big hot box, if you like, um, to try and protect crops for longer than they should be in the ground or to start them earlier or protect them earlier. And that works uh, up to a point and it, it works because I can see that it's happening, but it doesn't actually tell me what's going on. Now, over the sort of last 10 or 15 years, I've been buying weather stations quite repeatedly, to be honest. You can get little boxes, they're like a big calculator, if you like, and it will tell you what the minimum temperature was the night before, what the maximum temperature was, and you can get a gauge of what's going on, but it still doesn't tell you a lot. And the thing is, they are cheap. I've paid anywhere from £10 upwards for these, these types of units, and they just don't last. If they last a season, um, I'm surprised. Now, if you kept it stacked in a greenhouse, just on a, on a pin or on the bench somewhere, it would probably last you years. But what I want is something that I can use in various locations and then swap and change them as the next test comes along. I want to see what's going on there. So it might be outdoors, indoors, on the top of a shed. I don't know. It, it could be anywhere. And I think that's probably what's broken these cheaper units that I've been using. And as I say, I started with an all-contained unit and then one that had a sensor attached to it, just a, a wire coming out of the bottom. Um, then I went to multi-sensor ones and the price was going up and I paid upwards. I think the most expensive one I paid was about £50. It had two or three sensors and a probe and do you know what, it lasted about eight months longer than the £20 one. So I went back to the cheap ones. This is the last one I bought and this is the sort of thing I'm talking about. It's like a, a calculator interface, LCD screen. This screen itself on this one broke. It didn't actually break, but where you get some of the bars on the numbers as a, as a printout, they just stopped working. So you couldn't tell the temperature. And here's a probe as well that's got a little LCD screen and you can just poke that in the ground somewhere. I've lost the other two. There was two of these that went with this and that's now kaput. But anyway, I've been looking online and looking at buying another one and I thought, here we go, another 20, 30 quid out of the pocket for something that's gonna break down the line. So anyway, I've been looking online and I was looking to buy another of those weather stations and I was thinking, here we go, another 20, 30, 40 quid for something that's just not gonna last or, or do the job well enough that I wanted to do and be able to last at the same time. And it's strange really, because the answer was staring me right in the face. Tony Smith, Tony C. Smith, if you, if you know him, if you don't, you ought to, I'll talk about him in a minute, um, has this thing that he's been using for a number of years called the Sensor Push. And I bought one, and this is the Sensor Push HTW sensor. And this measures humidity and the temperature as well. So it'll let me know um, what's actually going on. And, and in this, it's just a little, a little tiny thing like this. And it's got a little hoop at the top so you can put a cable tie through, a bit of wire, a bit of string, an elastic band or whatever, or just simply perch it on a hook somewhere. Um, and that will sense the temperature and the humidity wherever it's, it's placed and it will store that data for up to about 20 days and then via Bluetooth it will come through to your phone which is marvellous so we can store that data let's say for 20 days and um, and then as you get nearer via Bluetooth it just sort of downloads it for you automatically and I don't know if you can see this I'll try and fetch it in close before it goes black well, there you go you can see the sensors that are in there hopefully and it shows the temperature but it shows it progressively over a period of time so that you can spot trends you can spot as the temperature is rising or as it's falling and the same with the humidity now one thing i noticed this morning uh, when i came in and then switched this on and downloaded the data the moment i opened those doors the humidity just plummeted and it was what I was saying earlier in this season about my tomatoes, that um, 
I felt that when I was opening the doors to the polytunnel in the morning and carrying on with my work, everything seemed fine and dandy. It was a nice warm temperature, but the humidity was plummeting and that's why I wasn't, wasn't getting so much fruit on the tomatoes in, that, in this big tunnel and why I've now decided to grow them in the tunnel at the back because only one door will ever be open on that and I'm not using it as a sort of a pathway from the front of the plot to the back of the plot which is how I use this big tunnel here. So these sensors will help me work the, these things out. Um, do we need them? Not really. Will they help? Yes, they will enormously because as I say they'll tell me exactly what's going on where I've got them. For another example is, is those large uh, hot boxes of mine in the early part of the season. It's cold outside and I'm double protecting my tomato plants in them. They're inside a polytunnel but they're inside a hot box. Well, I'll be able to place a sensor in the polytunnel and in the hot box and I'll know the outside temperature anyway from the weather forecast. Um, so I'll have those three different variations and I'll get to know then what each of those structures do for me and it will help me plan things better and help me look after and maintain uh, my crops so much better. Well anyway, as I say, I've got these, this idea, Tony Smith's had one of these for a number of years and part of his job is looking for trends on computer graphs which so this is right up his street really is and um he he's spotting the same sort of things as i want want to be able to see so and he's had them for a number of years so that tells me that they they work and i'm not going to be replacing them in in a you know in a, a year down the line so i say Tony Smith, he, he, he makes out on his videos, he's a very affable fella and he makes out he doesn't know what he's doing, but he does, he's, he's got some clever and some smarts up here, you know, it's hiding but it's up there and he's got them and he's ever such a nice chap as well, I mean, he takes his dog Daisy down to the allotments and he, and as he, he'll describe himself, bumbles around his allotments but as I say, he knows what he's doing, he's, he's not daft. You know but anyway i recommend that you if you don't know tony get over to his channel i'll leave a link down below you can go and see him and the lovely daisy at the same time and uh you can subscribe over there i say he's you know i wouldn't be where i am now with my channel if it wasn't for tony he's helped me endlessly and he's never once asked me for anything so i'm paying it back there we go get over to tony's channel Watch one video, if you're not convinced, watch a second one or a third, and uh, you will be, and you'll subscribe, and uh, everything will be wonderful. <laughs> so that is the sensor push, the HTW sensor. I've got two of them. If they work out well enough, I will possibly get a third or even a fourth. I can see um, situations coming up where I will need that extra data and where it'd be quicker to gather them with multiple sensors as opposed to just the two. So say that's the HTW sensor. You can get a Wi-Fi gateway as well. Don't know much about that. I've just looked at it, but I haven't decided yet whether I need one. And I believe that that gateway will automatically, if it's in range, download the, sen the sensor data, data from this and store it for longer on the gateway. I don't know if Tony's got one, and if he has, hopefully he'll cover it in a video coming up. If he can talk about it, <laughs> let, let me know. Um, yeah, so very excited about that. And one of the great things about it is once it's on the phone, you can download it in a CSV format, which for those who don't know, it's a format that you can use in a spreadsheet, uh, something like Microsoft Excel. So I can store it for a long, long time and look back. And, and that's the idea is that you can spot trends and um, in comparison to the weather or how you're actually using the sensors or using the buildings or structures that the sensors are in. So that's good for me. But anyway, that's it for this one. It's just a little bit of an informa informational video, this one. Hopefully you've enjoyed it and got something from it. Have a look at these. I'll probably, no doubt, be talking about these um, through the upcoming year, I would think as the data suggests things and helps me make decisions on the plot. But I'm hoping that that's what that will do, or they will do, because I've got two of them, as I say, and hopefully that will help and aid 
my understanding of what is going on as I try these trials and tests and things that I like to do. So, not really a gardening video, but it's, it's important and it's certainly important for me anyway. Anyway, look after yourselves, stay safe. I'll see you all very, very soon. Gardening next time, promise. <laughs> there we go.